Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shalini Chakraborty, and I'm here with my fellow PhD students and friends, Rafael and Lupita. Uh, this is the first episode of the podcast on uh, diversity and equality days. And today we have Kauri, our professor here at Reykjavik University. So before we go first, uh, I already said uh, both of my friends' names, but if you want to give a short introduction of yourself for the audience, that would be fine. Oh, yeah. Um, so my name is Rafael. Uh, I'm a PhD student here at the Reykjavik University. And I'm from Belgium. I was studying in Brussels uh, for my master's thesis. And that's, I think, you need to know for now, I think. And hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lupita. I'm in the second year of my PhD research here at the university. I'm from Mexico. And yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, and I didn't say where I come from. I'm from India, and I'm also in my uh, second uh, end of second year of my PhD. And yeah, we are here with Kauri. Uh, Kauri, why don't you introduce yourself a bit, and then we can discuss about equality. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kauri Halterson. I'm a lecturer at the computer science department at Reykjavik University. Uh, I teach mainly in the undergraduate studies. I teach different programming courses. I teach computer graphics and and such, and I'm just happy to be in this little, very diverse panel of, of students at the, at the department to talk a little bit about equality and about, in particular, the equality days, which are starting today. Thank you so much. So since uh, we are talking about equality days, why don't you uh, tell us a bit about the event and uh, the part of RU you uh, in this event? Yeah, absolutely. So the equality days, are uh, a joint event between all the universities um, in Iceland. And so there's this kind of uh, joint committee between the uh, people who are working on equality issues in the university. So I'm chair of the equality committee in Reykjavik University. And we also have um, an equality representative um, here as well, Kolbrun. So the two of us are in this in this big committee and, and one or two people from all the seven universities in Iceland. Uh, the Equality Days are just a series of events where both students and staff from the universities will, will host events, um, have conversations, have interviews uh, on the topics of equality and topics of uh, online violence and online bullying are, are uh, something of a, a main topic uh, this year, but that doesn't mean that that uh, most of the events center on that. But there are one or two main events, big events, which are tomorrow and the and Wednesday, which center a little bit about this. But otherwise, it's just uh, topics on uh, gender equality, topics on um, minorities and and diversity in general. Some of them serious, but hopefully a lot of them just a little bit of a celebration on where we're actually at rather than uh, only the fight for where we need to mm -hmm. need to get to although that's the important the important issue of this age as always and so um so since we are talking about equality oh in this context uh, could you define exactly what do you mean by equality and so just before you said um discussing about uh, what we are aiming for and so Okay, so now for you, what exactly are you aiming for in terms of equality at the university here in Iceland, for example? Um, so I think big issues in the universities is just making, um, making study at the universities easier to access for, for everybody. And everybody is a very broad thing and equality is a very broad thing. So obviously um, we just have a fight in the world for equal rights, like actually rights against the law, whereas in Iceland, in many ways, equal rights as written are, are something that are um, kind of at the right place. So the things we need to focus on more in many cases, and what, what I maybe focus on more on uh, is, is kind of equal opportunities that is in reality rather than just in the law as it's written, and just equal treatment and equal expectations to people based on or, or not based on then um, gender or, or poverty issues or, or um, 
countries of origin or, or which languages people speak, to find ways to give people actual equal opportunities in that uh, studies are equally accessible for, for this. So in the context of the university, this is one big issue, just making study at universities accessible regardless of, of these backgrounds. Um, and obviously just, just treatment of people and, and the way people um, yeah, go through this system is, is equal and that everyone feels welcome uh, in the university. So yeah, not a so definition of equality as such, but that's such a broad subject that this is kind of kind of things that I. Yeah, so I, I understood. Yeah, uh, I see exactly your point about equality of opportunities. But now you said um, uh, so. You, so you took some examples so about genders, for example, uh, about uh, so the wage rate for these kind of things. But in fact, we can also uh, fragmentize. I mean, into a lot of groups, a lot of categories. So. For example, so we can add uh, the religion, but also the intelligence, uh, the attractiveness or something like that. And mm -hmm. so at the end, we can divide in so many different categories that we'll have only one individual in each category, in fact. Is that right? Yes. And, and kind of, I think the dream is always to say, we don't have to categorize this and we have to take one group and we need to lift it up towards another group and we always have to do that. But, but I'm not sure that is reality. Everyone wants to be blind to color, everyone wants to be mm -hmm. blind to gender, everyone wants to be blind to this, and that would be great if it were such, but I think that we still face issues where we need to actually actively support certain groups. If we take poverty, for instance, we need to actively support um, poorer members of our community to be able to study in order for them to have equal op opportunities. The university will not uh, accept a richer person rather than a poorer person. But in reality, the opportunities may not be equal. The same for um, uh, people who live in Iceland and, and are even born in Iceland, but to parents who are of, of a different descent, they just, um, research has shown that they have a harder time getting further in the, uh, basically further in their studies. They drop out sooner in, in, in the educational system as a whole and have a harder time actually getting to the point where they come to university studies. And this is a, a support issue where they need to be actively supported rather than just saying we're blind to this and we take everyone equally. We need to look at these problems and say there is an actual problem here and we need to, we need to face it actively. Does that answer yeah, some of yeah. your questions? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's also my question definitely. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm still I'm always a bit worried when we try to put people in some categories. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see your point. Um, yeah, and so yeah, it definitely answers my question. And and I I very much agree with you that that the categorization and taking two categories and saying we need to look differently at these categories or or we need to somehow actively look equally at them. Um, is something that we, we should strive towards and just saying we, we have all these students. And once students are in the university, I think we do a good job of, of treating everyone equally, or I, I like to hope so. And I like mm -hmm. to imagine that we treat students equally, that we answer their questions equally, that we treat their concerns equally. Um, but in many cases also, I think that's something that has in some cases to be done actively. It's not enough to just say, here's the material, everyone has equal access to it. In some cases, we have to look at things like, uh, are the themes of assignments or are the ways we put things uh, gender biased? Do we have, um, like in computer science, do we have uh, databases with lists of names or, or lists of sports teams that we're gonna use for some assignment just as test material? And all of this test material has, has male names of, of athletes, such and such. So in some cases, we can like be blind to this, but forget that maybe the data that we're working on or just are the textbooks all written by men? Are the um, research papers that masters and doctor students read in their studies, do they have a, an author that's male 
you know, in 90% of the time. And maybe it's hard to always find equal things, but in, in many cases, I think we need to actively, actively seek this out. Or that is at least my opinion at this point, that it's very much worth it to see that not only do we treat people equally, that we actually make sure that what we present to them, be it ourselves, the, the department, the staff of the department, what they see when they show up here is actually something that supports equality, that they see equal, an equal amount of, of teachers in the first year that are male and female, that they see equal amount of material that is written by male and female authors. And, uh, and we, we can go on and on. Yeah, so, but just, okay, so, so <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to take too much of the time of this discussion, but uh, so just for example, here in, in your examples and all your examples were taking into account only the male and female uh, categories, but of Absolutely. course we can reproduce this with another, another, let's say another, um, another, another category. So, for example, let's take uh, if you compute, um, if you look at the intelligence of the people writing the the, the papers, of course they will be higher than um, they will be quite high in comparison of the average uh, 100 100 QI for all the population. But it makes sense. I mean, in, in this case, it could make sense. So. We, and we're not enforced people that are absolutely not in computer science, uh, people who are um, not working in the intellectual field to write papers just to have, an, uh, let's say, an average of papers written by um, less than 100 Q, QI and, less, and um, plus, I mean, higher than 100 QI, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just taking, of course, uh, an obvious example, but um, so that's. So that's, yeah, that's the first question. And uh, that's the first interrogation. That's... And then another thing, uh, so yes, most of the papers are written by um, and, uh, by uh, men and most of the teachers are men. But so there is a link, there's a link. Uh, so it's obviously it's linked. But then isn't because um, maybe let's say, and so we, we know that, um, I mean, in psychology, we know that uh, men are more interested in things and women are more interested in in, uh, in in people, and so that's and that's not absolutely not a problem. That uh, I mean, this result it came from twenty five years ago. Oh, okay, and so now uh, to be engineers, we need to be very. I mean, you need to be very interested in things, and so is it. I mean, I mean, so at the end, would you enforce women to do, for example, uh, what jobs that? They don't want to do just in order to have 50 50 uh, in uh, 50 50 percent women and 50 percent men in this uh, in for this job and what's the opposite so for example in scandinavia so we have this proportion of uh, 20 to 1 uh, women to men uh, in nurses for example so there is plenty more nurses women than men and so would you enforce men to become nurse to become nurse and would you Unforced, I mean, would you fire women nurses, for example, just to have this 50-50? I mean, yeah, yeah. So I'm basically, the... just, just to try, I mean, just to, to, just to summarize the idea, it's basically, so the idea to have equality of opportunity is basically in order to have freedom of choice. But if one category uh, take, I mean, in, if one type category does different choices than another, so that, I mean, we will not have 50-50%. And so, what should we do in this case? Yeah. So I'm not sure that 50-50% is necessarily what we're aiming for, but, but yeah. the kind of um, equal opportunity to choose this field. I think even if it were true that, that men in general are, are more interested in certain aspects or in STEM or in things, whereas uh, communication would be more something that women are interested in, I think even if we have this broad categorization there we always have individuals so we you uh, in the end it's always an individual who is interested in a certain field and if individuals of either gender are interested in a field you want to make sure that at least entering into the field and entering into studies of this field doesn't discourage them yeah so uh, even if we don't have a student body that is 50 50 male and female, and maybe we can't make sure that the authors of the material are 50-50 male and female, that we at least actively make sure that we have visible people of as diverse backgrounds as we can, not only um, 
yeah, not like not only kind of existing, but actually in front of people. And so I think mm -hmm. what we can do in the university is to make it visibly so that people of different backgrounds and different genders, and and that's the thing you came came yeah. into. Yes, we're talking kind of about binary genders now, but I like to change the way we speak very much into how just different genders should be visible. Although obviously we just have more people of of certain genders than others. So so it, it can never be enforced in the way that you say. But to make sure that it's visible and that it's obvious that that the opportunity is is equal. Yeah. And then just that people aren't treated differently either in the workplace or in the studies or expected to do different things once they once they show up. But obviously we have to be tolerant to people choosing to do different things and people choosing to go different ways, whether that be a more masculine way or a more feminine way. I, I, I'm not sure that necessarily applies, but that people have equal opportunities to go into the field. And once they're in the field, that they have equal opportunities to choose their path through the field. Because I think communication and, and people skills are, are a very important thing in, in technology. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in, in technology topics today, that it, it's gone is the world where, where everyone who programmed for a computer just sat down in some basement or, or these companies had, had cubicles where people sat at their computer and were interested in nothing but their computer because, you know, uh, computer programs today and applications today have to do with communication with the general public. It's not only to make it easier for someone working in an office uh, entering data. Computer systems now have to communicate with people, which means that people with communication skills not only have to communicate with each other to work better in the workplace, but also make sure that the, the applications are communicating properly. So without saying one is feminine and one is masculine, to just say, we need people who are interested in databases because they're databases. We also need people who are interested in applications because the applications um, have a role in communication between people. I think here so, the important thing is to inspire the students. I think that like they have all the options, all the options are available. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's not possible to have 50% book written by a particular gender and 50% book written by another gender or uh, more divisions into that area. But if it's possible just to show that they are, there are available yeah. these resources by different genders and by different people. So yeah. they will get inspired and they will say, okay, there is an opportunity. And then it's an individual choice how he or she or they should act upon that mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Lupita. I, I personally agree with what you said. I, I like, I really like the word opportunity because I mean, two main uh, words in the definition of equality are rights and opportunities. And maybe, I don't know, my perception is that maybe all of us um, have right of something, but not all of us might have the opportunity to, to, to get access to the rights. And yeah, I, I have one question for Kauri. And in your personal experience and for the time that you have been here in the university, how would you describe the current situation of the quality here and the university and if you have like noticed any important change in the in the past years let's say mm. so if we're looking at the department the computer science department in particular um, uh, just the ratio of, of men and women uh, in the staff has drastically changed um, so so yeah we we have been hiring or the department has been hiring more women lately and i think it's in no way necessarily a uh, kind of like i said before like an active thing that that they're being hired it's just women are applying and women are really really good candidates and are coming into the department with with very diverse um, backgrounds which is an excellent thing and so the students are now seeing a more diverse set of teachers throughout their studies, which is a good thing as well. So I think we're on the on the right track. Another thing that needs to be thought about is uh, at some point, this department had very many male staff and maybe 
two to three women at any given point. But at the same time, the school was trying to go into the equality of, for instance, committees having an equal amount of men and women and such. And in the end, this comes down to the few women in the department needing to sit on more committees than the men. And this then coming down on their research, which means that their either their research or their teaching um, in some ways will, will either go behind or they have to work harder on that. And in the end, um, this can actually hold uh, women back in contrast to men. And there's actually a very new research that's being talked about now in the Icelandic media on how women just take longer to get to um, associate professor and professor positions. So in schools like here, where, where we have an equal amount of women and men in, in assistant professor positions and lecturer positions, as you go up to the associate professor and professor position, suddenly men, um, uh, yeah, there are more men. So, so it means that women are actually taking longer to be promoted and not necessarily because of this extra work, in some cases because of, of, of other issues, but, but also because women in many cases just have to um, take a longer route to these things. And I'm hoping that that's changing. And I'm hoping just the, the general equality of, uh, of workload is changing as well, because sadly enough, as much as we wouldn't like to admit it, kind of the equality of the workload on, on female staff, especially like in computer science, when there were very few of them, just became a little bit more than, uh, than male staff. But the change since I've been here is definitely very fast now in the last few years um, trending in the right direction um, uh, in that sense. That's very good to hear. Uh, I have a small, uh, just a small, a small question uh, because so you were um, pointing out a research and so maybe there is the answer to my question in this but so you said that it takes longer for a, uh, for a woman to become a, a assistant teacher or teacher at the university. That's what you said, isn't it? Or yeah, or yeah in the professor, in the professor yeah. kind of research promotion track. Okay. Women but, simply took longer to, um, to reach certain positions. So from my experience, so people, I mean, people become professor uh, at the university around, I mean, let's say around 30 to 50 years old, let's say, they, more or less. Um, but it's not as this period that uh, plenty of the women, especially in Ireland, in Iceland, where the birth rate is quite high, it's not where at this um, at this period that women will take. Uh, I mean, some of them at, at least uh, take. Uh, uh, or to say that um, birth holidays. I don't know how to say in English this word. But so, isn't it linked about that? Is it linked with that? I mean, is that, that one is part of the factor? That is part of it, and and I think in many cases that's. Uh, that's actually an issue that needs to be uh, addressed in many ways. So yes, that is part of it. But I think a bigger part than maternity leave, which is just a few months off and then you're working again, is, is the expectations of, uh, of women to be doing different things than men or, or going off work early or, or doing things even after maternity leave that throughout the time we've had that issue of women either being expected to do this and so they they have i don't know less time at work or or somehow they're they're pushed more out of the workplace or in some cases simply they don't get promotions because of the possibility of this whether or not it's actually something that they do so this is this is this equality of treatment rather than necessarily equality of opportunity but just equality of treatment and equality of expectations to people that has you know, throughout time and is hopefully changing now, uh, has just been different. So treating dif people differently um, based on their gender or expecting different things from them based on their gender can in the end lead to kind of cognitive biases to feel that somehow the women are, are, are going slower in the promotion track when maybe they're not, but in the end, um, they don't get the promotions. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in the end. But I think that's a very, very good. I don't have point. the answers to all of these, but, but yeah. Well, that's actually a very good point, especially the second point you said that 
since people are expecting this to happen, that kind of causing the delay in their um, promotion or any sorts of promotion. And I think one of the solution to this is to like spread more awareness of this. Mm -hmm. And that's, I would say, uh, the last question uh, from my side is, as a teacher, how do you think from the university level, we can spread more awareness about these topics? And since we are doing this uh, equality event, that's fine as well. But in terms of education, in terms of their daily university level degrees, do you think there is a way that we should make people more aware of stuff like that from very early stage? Um, so this is, a, this is a tough question because one thing is kind of, how do we make them aware or how do we make students, for instance, aware of these topics and, and add these topics into our subjects? I think this is something that would be beneficial, but at the same time, a teacher has a subject to teach and, and you don't have that much time to teach it. So you kind of um, need to cram in a lot of material, but so it would have to be a very big change in giving courses room to, to deal with these issues. Another thing that can be done, which is similar to what I was talking about earlier, is simply to make sure that the presentation in the university is that there are equal amounts of people of different genders. So, so if we have um, people of different genders within the university, that we make sure that, that we visibly make students see that they're, they're there. And, and just in, in choosing TAs, like teaching assistants, to make sure that when those choices are made, we don't have a criteria that is very gender biased. Because if we already have a student body, which is uh, has a majority of, of male students, and we simply say, okay, we're just gonna line the applications for, for TAs regarding some, based on some one uh, criteria like grade or something like that, we're obviously gonna get that same uh, how to say we're going to get that uh, that same ratio out again, and in many cases, you know, since we have a lot of a lot of subjects, a lot of these subjects will only have male TAs if the student body is is in majority male. So we have to make sure that the criteria that we're looking at is not just one simple criteria. Like we have to make sure if someone is a teaching assistant, can we add a criteria that when they themselves were students that they were active in communicating with TAs that they were active in their own uh, studies and they were actually participating rather than just, uh, uh, and taking more maybe more criteria into, into account. So that if we have a gender bias criteria, at least if we have a diverse criteria, we'll get a diverse set of people and make sure that we can present good TAs that are not there because we somehow pull them in for no reason, but just to make a criteria that allows for a more diverse set of teaching assistants. And so the students coming into the first year will see a group of teaching assistants, which is, which is equal and is diverse. And they'll see a group of teachers teaching these first year courses, which is diverse. And I think maybe not raising awareness, but, but just making people feel that everyone is welcome there and making people feel that these, um, gender issues are being dealt with on the university level. One of those things is just making sure that the, the pres presentation is such. And um, since we don't have a lot of time, I guess, yet there's one point that I, I would like to make as well in, in equality, because we talked about our, the equality of opportunities, the equality of kind of treatment and expectations. And often the discussion of these goes into, I'm gonna see in which team I am, and I want the equality for me. So I want to make sure that I am at the right kind of, that, that I'm not being somehow um, shorthanded in this. That we also have to look at the kind of right for everyone, whether we're male, female, or what ethnic background we are, that we have a right to a society that is diverse. Like we have a right to an education where a diverse group of people is represented so that we have the right for a, a bigger likelihood of some of these people that are kind of mentors, our teachers, our TAs, are someone that we can relate with. So it's not only about um, 
it's not only about all genders getting the same opportunities to be there. It's also just about every single person having the right to having decisions made for them by a diverse set of people, because those will be better decisions. Having being taught by a diverse set of people, because you're more likely to be taught more and broader things and taught in a way that resonates with you if it's not all the same type of person. And even for me as a, as a white male, if I just had an entire set of white male teachers and white male TAs, even for me, that would be worse. Even though the, all of those people may be the people that I resonate with, it, you know, having this monotone set of people making decisions, monotone set of people affecting your life will always be a, a lesser experience than having a diverse set of people. So I'd like to also add that to my kind of personal definition of equality is just my right to be uh, or to have access to a diverse set of people, whether it be my government, whether it be my fellow staff, my students, it's just a, a right to a diverse um, environment is something that, that has to be taken into consideration as well, if that makes sense. That makes totally sense. Yeah, I, I would say the best thing would have to have the most, compet the most competent set of, set of, uh, of people. So for example, uh, I would like my teacher to be as competent as possible. That's my first goal. I mean, for me, for myself, that would be the first things I would aim for. Yeah. But it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily uh, contradictory with, with, with what you said just before. No, it's not, not contrary. And, uh, and in many cases, if you have uh, a rather narrow criteria for what that competence is, yes, you'll get very competent people from that criteria, um, which is excellent. You have very competent people, but you might also get, um, what's the word, homogenous, a very homogenous set of people, people who seem very much alike. So in some cases you might say, okay, let's change the criteria. So maybe this particular hard competence criteria will go a little bit to second place based on other criteria. but the overall experience that I'll have will be a more diverse set of people. It'll be um, broader opinions and, and hopefully result in students who are kind of more wide-minded people in the end having been taught by this diverse set of people, which obviously are, are competent in what they do. Like you said with the, well, you talked about the IQ, but I'd rather say, take something like just interest, that obviously you don't just take anyone and put them into computer science because computer science needs someone that fits their mold. First, everyone needs to have interest in computer science or interest in engineering or interest in psychology. So obviously, yeah, different people will go to different places, but we make, need to make sure that, that even if we only expect people with interest in computer science to come here, that still you know, can't be one type of person because people can have so many other interests and so many other competences, but one of them is their interest in computer science. So we want them and we want all of them. That's amazing. And we are a bit over time, but it was a fantastic conversation and I wish we had more time to talk more about this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. We could talk about this, this endlessly. All day. <laughs> and we, yeah, yeah. we have the whole week of the equality day. So, yes. <laughs> so definitely check out the program and we'll have the, the student panel Friday. Yes. Friday noon, where Shalini will also also yes. be representing be there. <laughs> the Reykjavik University along with student representatives from, from the other six universities in Iceland. Yes. And please, please go check out the schedule. And there are some amazing events going on about neurodiversity, about different uh, people from different languages, countries, their experience, and definitely the student panel discussion, which will be amazing. So thank you so much, Kauri and Rafael and Lupita. I think that was a phenomenal first episode we have. Yeah, very thank much. you very much for this conversation. Yes. And please check out the next episode as well. And I think we can say bye-bye now. <laughs> okay, thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. Thank you.